have a lot of pocket knives that I want to show you guys. But before we look at all the pocket knives that I have, I want you to know that this was originally filmed as a longer video and I broke it up into two parts. This video is just going to go through pocket knives that I've had throughout my life. And then if you want to find out about what pocket knife I carry now, you got to go find that video, which is about the Spyderco Para 3 Lightweight. All right, now let's look at some pocket knives. It's time to talk about pocket knives. And it's been a while since you see my hands. Did you miss them? Here they are. So a little bit about my history with pocket knives. When I was growing up, my grandfather always carried a knife like this. In fact, this was his knife. This one is a buck, I believe. And as you can see, it's well worn. In fact, he broke the tip off this and sharpened it into a sheep foot blade. Maybe this is why I've always kind of had a fondness for sheep's foot blades. But as you can see, one of the problems with this kind of knife, at least now in the modern time, is it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to do this every time. And to be honest, that part, even as a kid, that part of these kind of pocket knives was always a little scary for me. You always had to make sure you know where your fingers are when you use one of these. This is another type that he carried. This is one I bought. It's obviously a lot larger, but this is a brand he liked. He used to buy old timers too. And this one's cool because it's got that real sharp blade. <laughs> That's a real drop point right there. Look at that. This is the kind of knife you pull out and it just from the look of it, somebody's scared, even though it doesn't even have to be that big. That's not a knife. That's a knife. On the other side, you've got kind of like what he made there, right? Almost a sheep's foot blade, sort of like what he made. It's got kind of a tonto edge to it almost, or tonto tip, I should say. But then it's got a third one, a real sheep's foot blade. I like that a lot, but I still don't like carrying this kind of knife. I bought it hoping I would change my mind after a while, but I didn't. The knife that I was given when I was a kid was a buck. This is a real dirty <laughs> carrying case here. And I'm not even sure. It says buck light on here. I don't know if that's the type of buck this is. I'm not really super familiar with bucks because I thought they were all the same knife <laughs> for a long time because they all have a similar style. This one, you could slow roll if you want to, but it's kind of dangerous. But I had this as a kid. I broke the tip off, <laughs> throwing it at a dartboard. So yeah, as you can see, uh, I don't know if you can actually see that. Let's see, can you see the lines going this way? Because I think I tried to sharpen it when I was a kid, but I went this way, not understanding how you sharpen a knife. Yeah, did it on both sides. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. This has a lock on it. So I had this one as a kid, but I never really carried it. I just had it and threw it at dartboards, apparently. The first knife that I bought myself as an adult was this, which I can actually slow roll. This is a CRKT, Falcon, Crawford Falcon. Uh, when I was working in catering, when I was a younger man, this is the knife I had on me. It's a good knife. It's a good knife. It's sturdy. Um, the only thing I would say about it that I had a problem with is see this lock here. The purpose of this lock is to lock the blade. So when you're going at something, your folding knife doesn't fold in on you, even though it has a liner lock, which is probably one of the most secure types of locks. Well, check it out. That's in the locked position. Oh, weird. I closed it. Yeah, uh, one time I forgot the lock was on and I worked really hard to close it and I broke the lock. So, not a lot of confidence <laughs> in the locks on this kind of knife since I could break it with my hands. This was a, a good knife, but once again, as with the other ones, I didn't take it with me everywhere. I never really bonded with it. I hated this and I still hate this pocket clip. Then I bought this, which is the cryo by kershaw it might be the cryo 2 i can't remember if the cryo or the cryo 2 is the larger one this is the smaller one 
This was the first pocket knife that I bought that I actually bonded with. Flick open, assisted open. I actually broke the spring on this and they sent me out a replacement about a year ago. And for a while I couldn't get it to where the action was similar to how it was brand new. This is close, but it used to be a little snappier. And as much as I fiddle with this, I can't seem to get the same snap. I bonded with this knife. I took it with me everywhere, but it was never a perfect knife for me. This is, this is nice. This opening, it feels cool, but here's the problem with it. Check out how I'm holding the knife. See how you hold it to open it? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna go to cutting like that. I need a grip, right? And you to do that, you have to slide this, this knife down in here, grab it with that, and then squeeze that finger back in to get a good grip. That's a lot of movement with a knife after opening it. It's not about speed, it's about safety. Because if you're trying to get a knife out fast and you're doing this, the chance of dropping it is a little bit better or chance of cutting yourself. I love that the assist button here works as a guard. That's always nice. I never was afraid of my finger slipping up here. But as you can see, here's another problem with this knife. And I don't have very big hands. I have about medium sized hands. That pinky's not on there at all. Great jimping here. But you're kind of jimping it with this part of your thumb. You can go like this, but it's not very comfortable. The clip's cool because the clip is reversible. Makes it a pretty versatile knife. The other thing I discovered about this knife after carrying it for years is I'm not really a fan of metal scales. Number one, it adds a lot of weight to the knife. Like when you drop your pants to go to the bathroom or you know take off your shoes at night, clank, this hits the ground. It really it hits the ground and it's not that heavy, but it's just heavy enough for that to happen. And the other thing about metal, at least this particular style is there's no grip here. It's not a terrible thing, but it's not the best. And then of course, metal is susceptible to temperature. So for example, in Texas, when it gets really hot, it gets above hundred degrees, knife gets warm. And when it gets cold, so does the knife. So, you know, if you have to be outside doing something on a 31 degree day, this isn't the knife you want to have in your bare hands. It's going to be damn cold. You know, my other everyday carries, you've seen this before. We've got Swiss army manager, and then we have my TPT slide, which is a utility knife. This is, it's my wallet plus an EDC pouch. This is only on me pretty much when I leave the house. This is my grab and go thing. Check out these little guys. Look at that. And these are real knives. These aren't toys. These are real sharpened blades. In fact, <laughs> this knife is one of the scariest knives to open. <laughs> Look at that. We got this one with a cowboy on it. This one's a little bit bigger. Was slightly bigger than that one. Oh, I guess they're about the same size. Blade's bigger though. And then you got this little guy. Pew. I don't even know where these came from. They might have been my grandfather's. Uh, I don't know. I found them during the move. I love them. So that's the history of my pocket knives. If you want to see the other part of this where I talk about this knife, the knife that I carry now, make sure you go find that video and hit subscribe while you're here. Thanks.